Good morning. Noguri has weakened to a tropical storm but leaves a trail of destruction in its wake. The worst is over for Korea's southern lands, but now it has Kyushu, Japan, in its scope. Anger explodes in Brazil as a series of protests, robbery and vandalism ensues in the World Cup nation, the World Cup host nation over the 7-1 loss to Germany. Discover Korea's UNESCO heritage sites, a defensive fortress, an emergency palace and a castle the king rested during war. To buy kini or mono kini, whether you're swimsuit ready or not, there are options for you, so stop making excuses to heat, hit the beach. On Korea Today, Thursday, July 10th, 2014. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. Good morning. Thanks for tuning in on this Thursday morning. I'm Oh jin -ju alongside Kim min Jung and Kim Young. And we're 10 days into the second half of the year 2014, and it looks like someone's smiling out there. Sai, he has a lot to smile about. He has the most viewed Korean pop music video on YouTube for the first half of 2014. That's right. right. It is one of the most polarizing videos. I think some people <laughs> love it, some people hate it. I'm one of the latter, I must say. <laughs> but uh, he does a pretty young Kim actually does a pretty good version of Hangover. You know, That's maybe I should wear that blazer that I wore a couple <laughs> weeks back, where it actually made me look like Sai, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move on to our top story for this morning. We begin with Typhoon Noguri. Following a path of destruction which left at least one dead in Okinawa and brought direct influence to the southern regions of Korea on Wednesday. Jeju Island was hit with heavy rains and winds reaching speeds of over 30 meters per second leading to school cancellations and halting sea and air travel. Over 13,000 homes experienced power outages. Aquaculture farms reported losses of some 600,000 fish. Damage to buildings and flooding around the island were also reported. The typhoon warning on Jeju has since been lifted, but the winds and rains will continue for the next few hours. Noguri has weakened to a tropical storm, but officials in Japan are bracing for it as it makes its way to Kyushu. President Park Geun-hye is scheduled to meet with floor leaders of the ruling and opposition parties on this Thursday to discuss current state affairs and bills that are pending at the National Assembly. The president will use the meeting with Senuri Party floor leader Lee Wan Gu and his opposition party counterpart Park Young Sun to seek a breakthrough in the political stalemate aggravated by repeated nominee withdrawals since the Seoul Ho ferry disaster. She is expected to seek parliamentary cooperation and passing key pending bills, including the government's safety reform measures and the economic revival draft. Analysts say President Park's first meeting with the floor leaders of the political parties comes as part of her efforts to communicate more with the opposition party and to regain momentum in implementing her reform measures. In late June, Korea's Ministry of Health and Welfare expressed its intent to push ahead with the World Health Organization's recommendation to raise the country's cigarette prices in order to curb the high smoking rate. What does the country think about that? A recent poll by Gallup Korea shows 59% of those surveyed support raising the price of cigarettes. 1,000 citizens over the age of 19 participated in this survey, which asked whether they support a price hike of 2,000 won, or roughly $2 to about 4,500 won a pack, and 59% said they support it, while 35% said they are against it. 7% were undecided. What if you want to buy a bag or a pair of shoes of a luxury brand but can't afford it? Now, this kind of situation likely makes people turn to counterfeit goods, even knowing it is illegal to sell or buy them. So the demand for such products are always there or actually on the rise. That's why efforts are being made to apply international standards against the production, consumption and distribution of forged products, with meetings on the topic held this week here in Seoul. For more on this, we go over to Adina. News is Kwon Soa. Good morning, Soa. 
Good morning, Jinju. I'm standing here inside a warehouse at the Seoul Main Customs Office, and、uh, where thousands of fake products have been confiscated, just like these ties that I'm holding here in my hand. Now, it's not only about、uh, purchasing fake luxury brand items, but food products, pharmaceuticals, automobile, and、uh, aircraft components even are being forged, which is、uh, risking our health and safety. So, to reduce Of such risks and others, Korea is actively working with global experts to fight the fake market. Let's take a look. These appear to be brazucas, the official football of the Brazil World Cup ball, but they are fakes, and all were caught being smuggled into Korea from China. It's just one example of the growing market for counterfeit goods in Korea. According to the International Chamber of Commerce, the damage caused by counterfeiting amounts to around 600 billion U.S. dollars annually. Here in Korea, more than 131,000 items have been confiscated since 2010. Replica watches racked up the greatest total in 2012 at some 300 million U.S. dollars, followed by handbags and household electronics. To address the problem, the International Organization for Standardization has been holding talks with 17 participating countries on fraud countermeasures and controls since 2009. This week, a meeting is being held in Korea, hosted by the Korean Agency for Technology and Standards. So normally we would be competitors, but using the standards format, we can come together at one table. And cooperate with each other and share our best methods. So, where does Korea stand in terms of fighting counterfeiting? We're developing 2D and 3D barcode techniques and many other tools that make copying impossible. We are continuing with the registration of patents in order for our techniques to be recognized globally. That's why I believe following international standards and dominating the market in advance is an important task. Kwang Insa is a private enterprise that does security printing. They print gift certificates, security papers, passports, identification cards, and much more. For extra security, this company goes through many stages to manufacture just one product. It begins with the intricate design of labels, holograms, and watermarks. Kwang Insa paid around 300,000 U.S. dollars from Belgium for a special software that guarantees top security. The main process is the printing. Instead of the usual four-color process printing, spot color printing is used, meaning the machines have to be operated numerous times. Invisible printing makes it only possible to check the authenticity of a product through UV light. Gold leafing, numbering, and packaging also needs to be done with extra focus on preventing forgery. But the company says the general perception of security printing and similar techniques is low here in Korea, and that's why small and mid-sized companies are facing difficulties. Due to the country's topography, which is similar to an island, security-related issues aren't that high a priority compared to other countries. Our company owns two patents, and each year we try to register more, but many times they have not been adopted. The executive director added, as Korea is still a small market when it comes to counterfeit measures, many companies are not yet in the situation to be following or benefiting from any international standards. The company I visited earlier was very kind enough to show me a lot of its techniques to prevent forged products.、Uh, but actually, many other companies that have the same skills as well,、uh, they refused、uh, to let me film them、uh, because they say even、uh, their own employees are not allowed to take cell phone pictures of the interior of the firm、uh, due to security reasons. Right, and even though each country has their own set of regulations on counterfeit goods, I understand that international standards on them are still in their early stages. And the international meeting taking place in Seoul was launched just five years ago. What can we expect from this meeting? 
Well, I talked to one of the organizers at the meeting, and she told me that a lot of focus is still on setting up general principles and uh, defining the terminology to uh, related to the issue. And we're also expecting performance criteria for authentication solutions, which are the techniques we earlier saw, like 2D barcodes, holograms, etc. Mm -hmm. It definitely seems that more efforts will be needed for the international community as a whole to deal with illegal forging. Thank you, Sarah, for that report. That was our Kwon Shua reporting on global efforts to block counterfeit goods. Good morning. It's time to run through the front pages of your newspapers. And uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping yesterday addressed the start of the annual strategic and economic dialogue in Beijing. And all of the local papers this morning are carrying stories on this. So let's start with that subject here on Chosan Ilbo. And we'll look closely at the image as well as the article below. Now, at the high-level dialogue between China and the U.S., President Xi called on the two powers to make a correct judgment on their strategic intentions. He also added in his kickoff speech that the Asia-Pacific region is vast enough for presence of both China and the U.S. Now, the two-day meeting began with Vice Premier Wang Yang and State Councillor Yang Jiechi leading the Chinese side and Secretary of State John Kerry and uh, Treasury Secretary J Jacob Liu heading the U.S. side. And this is an image of uh, Xi Jinping getting ready to address the delegations with John Kerry looking up at, looking up at him. Uh, now, she said friction between the two nations is inevitable as they are on different development paths, uh, but also as these talks are taking place in an atmosphere of growing mutual mistrust. Uh, he added that they have to break the old pattern of confrontation. Meanwhile, over on Tonga Ilbo, we'll take a look at a, another story regarding Japan's movements. Amid all of this, uh, the wars and relations between Korea and Japan, in fact, uh, the title says Japan to hold the 60th anniversary of the establishment of self-defense forces in Seoul. Now, the sub-headlines here, uh, they say that the Japanese embassy here in Seoul is preparing to hold this commemorative event tomorrow and has sent out some 500 invitations to local figures. However, as tensions between Korea and Japan are heightened with the recent decision by the Japanese government to exercise the right to collective self-defense, as well as its denial of past wartime atrocities, many of the local officials invited plan on not attending the event with the anti-Japanese sentiment lingering in Korea. And switching gears now to another local story here on Gyeongyang Shinmun regarding an unfortunate confirmation hearing yet again. Now, uh, this title says, uh, opposition lawmakers, in fact, grilled education minister designate Kim Myung-soo during his confirmation hearing uh, at the National Assembly yesterday, questioning his alleged wrongdoings, including plagiarism. Uh, this title says, incoherent and nonsensical responses, Kim Myung-soo's abilities questions. Now, Kim has been under attack for alleged multiple acts of plagiarism, illicit applications for research funds, and inflation of career credentials during his tenure as a professor at the Seiran Korea National University of Education. Now, Kim failed to provide clear answers, but said that he will not stand down. And moving to Chungang Ilbo, take a look at this side image here. And the picture is titled, Brazil Crying, Suniega Dreading. Now here you see a Brazilian football fan breaking down following yesterday's match against Germany. And in the meantime, Colombian defender Juan Suniega, who entered, uh, who ended rather, uh, the Brazilian ace Neymar's World Cup campaign, has been on the receiving end of a string of racist death threats. And finally, let's take a look at the economy here on the Mail Business newspaper. And this is a compare and contrast story on the Korean economy uh, versus the Japanese economy. The header says, Japan's economy spurting, uh, Korean economy dropping. Now the sub-headlines uh, here, they note uh, that the article evaluates one year and a half of the Kunenomics compared to Abenomics. Now if you take a look at this graph, 
Um, the blue line represents the, uh, co the stock prices, uh, Kospi for Korea and Nikkei for Japan, while the green line, the unemployment rate. Now you can see that the Korean stock prices have been on a decline, uh, while the Japanese stock prices have been rising, um, making things worse as for the unemployment rate, a rise in the unemployment rate here in Korea, while a fall of the unemployment rate over in Japan. And that was a look at your newspaper headlines for this Thursday. Now, coming up are the stock numbers from Wednesday. Let's now get a check on the weather. The heat wave advisory was issued for the first time yesterday here in Seoul of mm -hmm. the year. That's right, and the uh, discomfort index is actually rising because the rise the in the humidity, humidity caused by ooh. that typhoon passing through the uh, southern uh, seas. Mm. That actually is bringing more humidity so up. So muggy, right? And that's right. We'll get the check on. We'll get a check on our weather conditions for today, and a peek into tomorrow's weather with Chun Song Cho. She joins us today from Sochou. Good, Good morning. morning to you, Song Cho. Good morning, guys. People in Korea, especially those in the southern regions, can take a sigh of relief now as the southern regions are no longer influenced by the outer bands of Noguri. Once a super typhoon, it has now weakened into a, just a tropical storm, and it's 200 kilometers off the southeast coast of Jeju-do Island. The eye of the typhoon is no longer visible, as you can see in the satellite image. Noguri is moving eastward at 19 kilometers per hour, but residents across Japan should not let let their guard down. Here in Korea, now the problem is the scorching heat wave around the central regions, as well as a high humidity level that just makes you feel really uncomfortable and sticky. A heat wave advisory has been issued in Gyeonggi-do, Gangwon-do, and Chungcheong-do provinces. And with that, let's take a closer look at today's forecast. Warm and humid air from Noguri is steaming up the central regions. Seoul and Daejeon's midday highs are the hottest at 33, Daegu and Gwangju at 32 and 31 respectively. Even Jeju remains at 27 degrees Celsius today. We have overcast skies nationwide and some parts around Chungcheongbuk-do and Gyeongsangbuk-do provinces will receive light precipitation in the afternoon. This is all for me with the weather forecast. Back to Minjang. Thank you, Song Cho. And now, Brazilians are still reeling from the devastating loss to Germany, 7-1. to one. We're going to check in with our Eunice Kim from the News Center to see just how they're holding up. Good morning to you, Eunice. Good morning, Min Chung. Now, yesterday was certainly not a good day for Brazil. You're absolutely right. I would even say that's a bit of an understatement mm. since it was uh, a shocking day for Brazil and they are in a, still in a state of mourning, I would say. Unbelievable loss, 1-7 to seven to Germany in their semi-final match. And given how much Brazil had gone through to get these games on track and, of course, how much hope had been placed on the national team itself, you can imagine why authorities were concerned about widespread protests taking place as a consequence. Police were on high alert as anger boiled over onto the streets. There was no mass rioting, but local papers did report individual incidents, including reports of vandalism, robbery, and some 20 buses being set alight in a Sao Paulo garage. And in an area usually packed with revelers, angry ba uh, fans burned a Brazilian flag. So individual incidents here and there. The Korean Foreign Ministry has urged Koreans uh, to avoid avoid crowds and exercise caution just in case. 
More and frequent airstrikes befell the grounds of the Gaza Strip as the second day of Israel's offensive killed at least 22 people and struck 200 Hamas targets. Palestinian militants continue to shoot rockets deep into Israeli territory deeper north than ever before. No Israeli casualties have been reported. The Israeli intelligence minister warned a ground operation could be imminent to, quote, temporarily cut off the strengthening of of this terror army. This, as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, his army was ready for all possibilities, reiterating that Hamas will pay a heavy price for firing toward Israeli citizens. Now, earlier, Western backed uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said what's happening was not a war between two armies and accused Israel of rejecting a proposed truce, adding that Palestinian factions in Gaza wanted to reach calm. Mm -hmm. The situation does not look good. In the meantime, it was election day in Indonesia yesterday, a very tight race. And this morning, we're learning that both candidates have claimed victory. How is this possible? Tell us more. Right. It appears both camps have based their conclusion on the so-called quick counts by pollsters that reported contradicting results. Now, Jakarta Governor Joko Widodo claimed victory shortly after the polls closed uh, and followed by his opponent, former Army General Prabowo Subianto, about an hour later, uh, said he received the support and mandate from the people of Indonesia. So this uh, race very much still uh, tight down to the last minutes. The country's oldest think tank, CSIS, put Widodo in the lead with 52 percent to Subianto's 48 percent, but others had Subianto leading by one to two percentage points. Incumbent President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono is urging calm until the official tally is announced on July 22nd. And that's a wrap of the global headlines we're following this morning. And still to come, the fortresses with international reputations. Suwon Hwa Song and Nam Han Chan Song learn about the unique characteristics and backstories of these two fortresses that were designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites on Korea Discovered. And on this Thursday morning for our Arts and Culture segment, our Yim Yoon Hee joins us for a collaboration of the traditional and the contemporary, which leads to something new, unique, and sometimes explosive and surprising. Good morning. Good morning, Young. You're absolutely right. So I'm a huge fan of collaborations when it comes to arts because it really does open the doors to endless possibilities. And so here in Seoul, they host a music festival that aims to bring these really unique and new collaborations to the music front. Take a look. Korean traditional music undoubtedly has the longest history on the peninsula. But Western instruments, with different sounds and techniques, have long been making an impression as well. The result is today's blend of various strings, drums, and even voices, swirling together to create a new type of experience. For 23 days in the midst of a hot summer, 101 artists bring down the temperature and set a cool mood, made by their instruments at the 5th Yeodak Festival. There are many different shades and colors to Korean music. We've taken new approaches to music, and this time Korean music is being combined with others in order to generate interest in Korean traditional music. The National Theater of Korea has long been a beacon of Korea's traditional music and culture in Seoul. And now it's hosting a festival on the pioneering edge of music. The drum and changu have gone down very different paths in history, but they've both served the same purpose. And here, their similarities, as well as their differences, are drawn out. Another unlikely couple, an electric guitar, a favorite of modern-day instruments, is paired with the voice of a chang, or traditional Korean ballad. It's a new kind of venture, one that welcomes in creativity, and the creation of unlikely collaborations. People are always wondering how the traditional can meet something like the classical. But the two don't just merge. Everyone has to be open-minded because it's not only about the instruments being played. 
The way we play our instruments isn't the problem. The obstacle lies in the flow and interaction with each other. We try to send a message to the audience and make them wonder, if this instrument meets with this, how would it sound? Our group is called the beauty of mixed sounds. And people will understand why when they hear us play because our sounds are exciting and get the feet moving. It's a sound that can only be heard at the moment of inception. Because it's not merely replication of former works, nor is it a simple collaboration. But instead is an experimental synthesis of music. This is a lot bigger in scale than I had imagined. We've mm -hmm. heard of uh, K-pop artists like Tiger JK, Bobby mm -hmm. Kim, and you know Yoon Doyeon band collaborating or putting some elements of traditional Korean folk music into it. Into it, but this is a whole festival that goes on. Mm -hmm. Must be exciting, and it must attract a lot of different types of the audience. Right. So it's especially popular with those in their 20s and 30s, um, but it really is popular across the age spectrum. And in fact, it has been growing. Last year, they had 101, 21 percent uh, occupancy, seat mm -hmm. occupancy which blows my mind. That means the theaters were overflowing with each performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously to support that um, inflow of people, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'd have to expand as a festival. Right, so they did expand. So this year they have 20 performances, which is uh, much more than they've had in the past. Uh, 10 different performance groups uh, uh, performing, so a lot more to catch this year. Okay, so it's not just about music though, but there are other performances mm -hmm. in this festival. Exactly. So they have another part called the talk session. Uh, the Yodak festival has a talk session where you can go and uh, hear the, the some of the participants speak and hear some of the musicians talk about their work and talk mm -hmm. about the music culture here um, as well. And so they actually have a phrase here in Korea, Uri Umak, and so that's our music. And mm -hmm. so that's really been uh, popular at the festival because they really want to emphasize how this is Korea's music and they really want to uh, spread it and spread awareness as well as, you know, make collaborations and just progress the music. You know, um, I think kids don't really get a lot of exposure to the mm -hmm. traditional Korean music. And, you know, sometimes they're drawn away from it because right. of what they're hearing, all those ABC songs, you know, mm -hmm. there's all kind of like pop music, right? So I think this would be a perfect opportunity for people to take their family and mm -hmm. the kids to expose them to Korean traditional music. Exactly. Actually, this weekend, um, they have a children's event part. Um, and so they actually have a Yodak school. And so that is a place for kids to go and to learn about out, uh, different instruments and different parts, the instruments from around the world as well. And so their theme is resonance. So this mm -hmm. idea of resonance, which is the foundation of Korean music. Mm -hmm. And so they want to teach that to the children. Mm -hmm. You know, you can never start too early with that. And so and that's only on the that. 13th and the 26th. Exactly. All right. So you have a very limited time Couple for that. A couple days to catch those. Exactly. Right, sounds great. That's this Sunday. So might be something to do for the weekend. Thank you very much, Uni. Always a pleasure. And still ahead on Korea today, are you swimsuit ready? I know I am not. Well, we have some uh, solutions to that problem. Summer vacation is right around the corner and it's time to get out from work and fun in the sun. But if you are worried that you're not completely swimsuit ready, then stay tuned for K-Style Jennifer's Ready with some swimwear tips as well as what's trending now. Time now for news to sum up. We've all been in a situation where our mobile phone battery just dies on us, mm -hmm. and it usually happens when we're waiting for an important phone call. Right, it always happens then. But that's when we need to charge the phone in the quickest way possible. But what is the quickest way? Our Sami Sarang joins us from the digital room with a possible solution. Good morning, Good morning. Mi Sarang. Good morning, guys. So the team at ZD Net Korea conducted a little experiment on this, and long story short, three things. Choose a charger with the highest amperage output, a cable manufactured by the same company as the phone, and three, plug the whole thing into the wall as opposed to the USB socket on your computer. This aside, let's have a look at the other issues trending online. A six-minute video providing the historical facts behind the EC naming controversy has been distributed to media outlets worldwide. A new study of 11,000 office workers examined which employees are most likely to use SNS or social networking services in the workplace. Phone charging, as we mentioned earlier, and the Citizens Coalition of Economic Justice submitted a request to the Fair Trade Commission 
to examine Apple's repair terms and conditions, arguing that the clauses are unfair. And according to research conducted by the U.S. National Cancer Institute, extreme obesity reduces one's lifespan by up to 14 years. Now going back to the first listing there, the naming of the body of water between Korea and Japan has gotten a lot of media coverage lately, due in part to the new East Sea dual naming law in the U.S. state of Virginia. Now there's a new video out providing the historical facts behind this long-standing dispute. Let's take a look. The six-minute video produced by Professor Seo Gyeong Dok details why the name Sea of Japan should not be used and why it is a cruel reminder of Japan's imperialist past. According to the video, the name East Sea has first been used in 50 BC in the Chronicles of the Three States and has appeared in countless number of documents and maps thereafter. Now this is 700 years before even the country's name Japan was first documented and more than 600 years before the name Sea of Japan first appeared in 1602. The name Sea of Japan only came into international use when Korea was under Japan's colonial rule and had no power to speak on the matter. Switching gears, here's an interesting question. Who in the workplace uses their Facebook and Twitter the most? The more senior workers or the more junior ones? The team at Norway's Bergen University recently conducted a study to find the answers and the results may surprise you. The study looked at over 10,000 Norwegian office workers and found that the more senior a person was, both in their work position and age, and the stricter a person is to their junior colleagues, the more likely they were to use SNS in the workplace, the finding being more pronounced in males than females. The research team provided the following possible reasons for their finding. Those in the more senior positions are 1. Less likely to have people telling them what to do. 2. Less likely to have time for real face-to-face -face social interactions and therefore resort to other forms of socializing. And 3. Are more likely to perceive internet presence as a positive asset. And with that interesting note, it's a wrap up for today's edition of your Daily News Sum Up. Any good Thursday morning to you all as we kick things off with the semi-final matchup between Argentina and the Netherlands, which kicked off earlier this morning. Of course, the winner headed to the final against Germany. So let's take a look at the highlights. Of course, no one expecting a 7-1 match in this one as both sides go neck and neck throughout the first half with Argentina looking a bit more aggressive on the offense. Now, despite several scoring opportunities for both nations, they're tied 0-0 going into the second half. And even in the second half, both sides having a hard time scoring as rain starts coming down and players have a hard time scoring 120 minutes of football ends in a nil-nil draw but in the penalty shootout it's Argentinian goalkeeper Sergio Romero to the rescue saving the first and third kicks helping Argentina advance to the final with a 4-2 penalty victory. And now moving over to the LPGA this time as South Korea's Park Bee, despite losing her number one ranking earlier this year, hopes to achieve a career Grand Slam after this weekend. Now the third-ranked Park Bee, who has previously won the Kraft Nabisco Championship, the LPGA Championship, and the U.S. Women's Open, just needs the British Women's Open title to achieve the career Grand Slam, which would be a first for an Asian golfer. Although she has been struggling this season, experts believe that if she can fix her putting, she has a chance over this weekend. And now moving on to Wednesday night's KBO action, the SK Wyverns cruise past the Kia Tigers 9-3 with the LG Twins winning in the bottom of the 10th inning 3-2 over the Tucson Bears and the Nexon Heroes crush the Hanwha Eagles once again 13-1. So with that said, let's take a look at the Samsung Lions take on the Lotte Giants. Of course, going into the game here, we go over to the first inning. Huang jae Kyun singles to left, Sona sub scores and it's 1-0 Lotte. But Yamiel Kul Navarro leading off the bottom of the inning and there it goes to deep right center field. Gone and we're tied 1 
one to one. Bottom the second inning, man on third, Park Han Yi with a clutch RBI single, giving the Samsung Lions the 2 1 lead. But with Samsung up 5 1 in the ninth inning, Loti starts rallying, starting off with Park Jong Yun drilling a two run shot to deep right field. Gone, and it's now 5 3. Next play, Yi Seung Hwa with a clutch RBI single to right field, and all of a sudden it's 5 4. But Im Chang Young able to get out of the jam here as he gets the save as Samsung holds on to win this one 5 4. And finishing things off with some midweek Kaylee Classic action, we had Poang and Seoul play a scoreless draw with Incheon and Seongnam drawing 1 to 1, and Cheonbuk and Cheju drew 1 1 as well. In other matches, Cheonnam beat Gyeongnam 3 to 1, and Sangju defeated Busan 2 0. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the Suwon Samsung Blue Wings take on the Ulsan Hyundai Tigers. Now, Suwon looking quite aggressive from the start as Roger Rodriguez da Silva scores the first goal of the match, giving Suwon the 1 0 lead. But shortly after the 25th minute, Santos make that 2 0 Suwon. Now, Suwon up 2 0, going into the second half of the match. EJ1 finds the back of the net for Ulsan, making it 2 1. But Kim Eun Sun helps Suwon run away with the lead as he sends one past the goalkeeper with a nice header there, three to one. Now Ko Chang Yeon does score on a penalty in the 68th minute, but Suwon holds on to win this one, three to two. Your final score. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day, and see you guys again for your sports needs. And today we're going to take you to the 11th UNESCO World Heritage Site here in Korea. And the destination comes just about three weeks ago. And Joey Mercadante joins us to tell us all about this site. Good morning, Joey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, so yeah, here in Korea we have quite a few UNESCO uh, listings. And 11 of those are World Heritage Sites. So today we're going to take a look at a uh, fortress that has newly been listed as a uh, World Heritage Site. And then we'll hop over to the first ever fortress uh, listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There's lots to do, lots to see, and lots to learn. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's go. go. Korea's very own World Heritage Sites. Fortresses that have stood strong throughout hundreds of years protecting their people, Suwon Hwasong and Naman Sansung Fortress. Naman Sansung, Sansung Fortress was designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in June 2014, making it Korea's 11th inscription. Located in Gwangju of the Gyeonggi-do province, Naman Sansung Fortress is the largest of Korea's mountain strongholds. It has a long history filled with joy, sorrow, and tragedies, such as the surrender to the Qing Dynasty invasion in the early 17th century, but it never truly gave up on its role as a protector. The walls of the fortress were built along a mountain ridge 500 meters above sea level. The natural defensive barriers were brilliantly strategic, but those natural barriers also made it really scenic as you can see along any of the five walking courses for the 2.8 million visitors that walking come per year. Walking along the Naman Sansung castle walls, it's so scenic and the air is so fresh. I also feel so special to be at a place that is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. One of the courses I chose led me to Seomun. It's the smallest out of the four main gates. It's amazing to think how long ago this original wall was built. It's absolutely fascinating. The next stop is an observation and commanding post called Suo Jangde, located at the highest point in the fortress. This pavilion is where King Injo himself stood commanding his troops during the Qing Dynasty invasion. Of the five posts, this is the only one still standing. And at the center of the mountain fortress is the Naman Sansong Hengum. Hi, nice to meet you. 
Can you please explain uh, what exactly Hengung is? Hengung means temporary palace. Hengung was for the kings to stay temporarily while they are traveling. Especially this temporary palace was built for the kings to take a refuge in times of emergency case. I got a guided tour around the Hengung and what was really great about that was the guide had so many interesting, interesting stories to share. Inside the Hengung is Weihengjeon Hall where the king conducted business and Nehengjeon Hall where his quarters were located. And this section is what helped get this fortress on the UNESCO list. Of all the Joseon Dynasty Hengungs, this is the only one with a royal ancestral shrine. In times of trouble, the fortress was meant to serve as a temporary capital, and this shrine is what legitimized that role. Instead of reading about it in books, I think it's better to come to Naman Sansong and see the ways of our ancestors for ourselves. Suwon Hwasong was the first fortress inscribed by UNESCO. It was built by the Joseon King Chongjo for defensive purposes, but also to house and honor the remains of his father, and to form a new political basis. UNESCO put emphasis on the structure itself, saying that the fortress represents the pinnacle of 18th century military architecture. Okay, so this ticket gets me aboard a trolley which will take me around the whole Hwasong area and a train just arrived. It's time to go. The Hwasong trolley was my first stop and I got to see the sights in style. <laughs> From Paldansan Mountain to Yonmude Post and I highly recommend doing this. Ooh, that looks like fun. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely worthwhile uh, visiting and you need to plan ahead and have enough time to enjoy it because it takes, it takes a good uh, half a day at least to enjoy both of them. Whoa, this is a familiar sound. Let's go check it out. So this is the Hengung or temporary palace of uh, Suwon Hwasong. And every Saturday at 2 p.m. they hold traditional performances and it, get, it gets packed with tourists as you can see. Mm -hmm. Very intense tourists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that little boy. So here's a different performance that I really liked watching. It's a recreation of a martial arts performance which was put on by the most elite tr troops of Chosang. The Korean culture is really awesome. Uh, and I thought the, uh, the different weapons that they used really captured the culture. And we had a great time watching it, so. And I got to have some fun with these programs. You can dress up in full mil military gear, just like a Choson Dynasty general. And they gave me a sword and everything. Yeah, that beard works for you, right? That beard and your mustache. This is very heavy, suited. but I feel very strong and powerful. But it's too hot. Here's the plot twist. But here's the plot twist. Oh, who's that beautiful lady? <laughs> wedding dress. Are you trying to tell queen. us something? <laughs> I'm surprised that I feel very yes. comfortable in these clothes. Oh. Yeah, those Oops. are heavy. Oh, you've yeah. tried it on too. Oh, <laughs> but I think the highlight of these experience programs was the traditional Korean archery. This is where soldiers were trained hundreds of years ago, Yonmude post, and uh, it was pretty cool that I got to stand exactly where they stood, you know, trying my hand at archery. Oh? Bullseye! Ooh. Good job! That's pretty good. Oh, I hit the bear almost. right in the head. <laughs> Ta -da, Supreme Hunter. I gave him a new earring. <laughs> right on the ear. A trip to the strongholds that kept cities safe. Namhan Sansong Fortress and Suwon Hwasong Fortress. It was like jumping straight into the pages of your history book, but much more fun. Hmm. 
you're right. History is not the most popular mm-hmm. subjects among kids, but this could be a great history lesson if you take your kids and this is a lively experience mm-hmm. and you can engage your kids in these experiences too. And what was what would you say was the highlight of your trip? Uh, for me, I'm going to have to say the uh, queen, the, the becoming the queen. That, that was fun. That was really fun. Um, the archery, I think, uh, uh-huh. was my highlight. Uh, um, even like even the fact that I, I ended up bruising my like I wasn't holding the bow right and I ended up bruising yeah, my right. forearm. Yeah, right. The the uh, the bow bowstring it actually scrapes against <laughs> yeah. your forearm, it's right? Still, you know, it still didn't take away from the fact that it was extremely fun. And, and the other thing I really liked was the guided tour. The uh-huh. tour guide was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the English uh, she spoke English perfectly, and uh, it's something that I highly recommend that you do because it's free. And it's going on uh, every day of the week except for Mondays. Uh-huh. So you, you want to check that out. Uh, the information there, is, you know, is great. Uh, mm-hmm. Little tidbits of information that you probably, you know, you wouldn't, you know, looking around is cool, but you need the information along yeah. with it. Right. It just adds to the value. Mm-hmm. Right, and all those uh, cultural performances and programs after, offered at Suan Huazang Fortress was also interesting to see. Where can we get more information okay. on that? Okay, yeah, so you want to visit the Suan Cultural Foundation website, which is really great uh, and comprehensive easy to navigate and they have um, lots of information on all the uh, programs and uh, events that you can do mm-hmm. in the in the uh, Hwasang Fortress area. Mm-hmm. On the weekends they've got performances uh, recreating the the royal procession for the king. Obviously these are good photo ops, uh, mm-hmm. colorful stuff uh, to take pictures of and right. you, you can try on the uh, the king's robe as I did and the, mm-hmm. the, the, mm-hmm. the guards the queens. Robes, and the queens of course. <laughs> uh, there's a stamp tour so you collect stamps along the way um, lots oh, of lots of fun, fun. stuff yeah. all right uh, the night scenery of the Hwasong fortress is very beautiful mm-hmm. and a lot of these palaces around Korea they offer night views how about Hwasong so the the Suwon uh, Hwasong um, Fortress night, uh, walking walking in the moonlight. Oh, mm. sounds so romantic. Sounds so great, too. right? <laughs> so this this tour is quite special, and uh, it there gives it you There's it gives you a chance right to walk in the moonlight. Wow. Uh, it's scheduled only around nights with a full moon. Mm. Okay, so you get a guided through uh, a guided tour through the moonlight with great historical stories uh, available also in English for foreigners, uh, but they're only on certain dates, so you want to double check that. Uh, there are traditional refre- refreshments and performances to enjoy as well. And the tickets are available on the Suwon Cultural Foundation website, which I mentioned. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll mm. definitely feel like a royal uh, member of the mm. royal family if you walk in the in the little palace, mm-hmm. right. the moonlit environment. Yeah, wow. it's at, you know the walls just add to the the yeah. ambiance, right? right? The, the illumination, the way they've uh, put up the lighting, it's beautiful. Just passing by mm-hmm. it will will tell you that it looks great. Right, and you don't right have on. to go too far. In Seoul, there are like a couple of uh, UNESCO World Heritage right. sites. Mm-hmm. For example, Changdeokgung Royal mm-hmm. Palace and Royal Tombs of the Chuoseon Dynasty, mm-hmm. I believe. We have to thank our ancestors mm-hmm. for setting all of these things up right. so we can have some great tourist destinations. Yeah. Thank you, Joey, so much. You're very welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Leah. Uh, thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow, uh, next week. See you next week. <laughs> thank you. Swimsuit season and women have their pick when it comes to swimwear styles. What types are trending this season? Let's find out. Selling well is the one-piece bikini or the monokini, which can enhance the silhouette with selectively placed cutouts and the athletic waterwear called rash guards, which provide protection from the sun. Of course, we cannot leave out this steady summer seller, bikinis. But there are so many different styles available. How do you know which one looks the best for you? Some aren't as well endowed as they would like in the bust area. However, there's an easy answer, frills. It gives the wearer more volume where they need it. I mostly wear bikinis with frills because it adds volume to my bust. Another easy solution, tops with a little underwire and padding. Now what if the concern is a bit of a pot belly? High waisted bottoms may be a good fix. 
Not only are they high-waisted, they're usually high-cut as well, giving an illusion of longer legs. I like high-waisted bottoms because they make my legs look long and covers my belly fat. And for the women with broad shoulders, a halter top is the answer. I wear halter necks because they make my shoulders look narrower and they're comfortable. There are many more options out there for all sorts of body types, so don't let swimwear concerns get you down. So are you ready to rock that swimwear? Because summer is here and it's time for some water fun. And Jennifer Kim joins us. Yep. She'll tell us all about the latest swimwear. Good morning. Good morning. Well, because there's a little bit less to work with when it comes to swimwear, uh, people tend to be quite picky when it comes to what they wear to the beach. So um, it's not quite surprising because everyone has different body shapes and sizes and preferences. So today I'm here to talk about the current spring uh, uh, swimwear trends mm. and some of the styling tips that I have Yay, here at really the beach. really excited. And it's very important what you wear. You're half naked basically going out there. So <laughs> yeah, you're right. your best. At That's least. right. You do want to look your best. And uh, apparently the rash guard, mm -hmm. the long sleeve types are really in. Yes. these days I prefer I mean just personally don't uh, get it but what, what's the idea behind okay. this I like these I they're actually kind of, sport one of these when I go swimming yeah they kind of look a little bit ugly but they are actually <laughs> the trend at the moment ugly. and they're called rash guards sorry young they're called rash guards because they're actually made to prevent rashes from uh -huh. occurring on your skin it was actually created originally for professional um, water athletes mm. um, and like surfers and jet skiers and these long sleeves protect you from the sun mm -hmm. and the material is actually made to regulate your body temperature so it doesn't rise too much especially when you're doing outdoor water sports mm -hmm. um, and it's great because you can wear it in couple t-shirts as well oh okay. let's show we sport oh, this look couple yeah. rash guards <laughs> there you go where's the give us the bottoms too right it, it, it must come with a bottom right. Right. Here it uh, is. There, there are also go. the shorter one for you as well Mm -hmm. the bigger so short for, 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 for like women that. and yep. a little longer for men. Right? Well, you can style them like that. I mean, for guys, you don't have much option in, when it comes to swimwear, so you want to just choose the right board yeah. shorts for you, the right pattern, the right length. What and about the right, I suppose the uh, colors don't have to ones. match, huh? Yep, they don't need to necessarily. Okay. All right. So well, these are good, great for kids who can't mm. regulate their own body temperatures. It's You're right. Like yeah, a lot of, and and also, it saves That's on true. sunscreen. You just wear that, and then you exactly. don't have to apply sunscreen every two or three hours right, or so. Yeah. So it's great for kids. Definitely. Mm. But how about for women who want to show off their bodies? Of course, they're extra I mean, we confident right about their bodies. I know the they want to go with. The monokini, mono right? Monokini, just okay, right are, next to there. Those are the monokinis, right? Mm. This is the monokini. It's basically a Ooh. one piece, so it's not bikini. It's a monokini. <laughs> and you, many people think that you have to have an extra hot model body to pull this off, but that's not true. Anyone can pull this off. Are you sure? And if you <laughs> choose the right one for your body shape, it actually creates the illusion of that uh -huh. optimum body shape that you're looking for. For yeah, example... In essence, it's a one piece with holes in it, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, so that's how it's come back as... <laughs> it would make you look fatter because it shows your waist a little bit? Mm. Well, that's, that's the psychology around it. So if you've got a longer waist, um, generally, and you want to create a little bit more volume, then try to go for the X strap monokinis uh -huh. so that actually creates a little bit more volume. So uh -huh. I've got a little example. Is, oh, would this here. be an yeah, example? Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. it wraps around your body and it creates a little bit more volume. So that's if you have a longer torso. If you have a longer torso mm -hmm. and you want to create a little bit more of that vivacious mm body shape okay. and if you've got a shorter torso kind of like me then you can go for the T shape which Are actually you elongates you <laughs> no <laughs> it elongates your body um, and also in regards to the shoulders if you've got narrow shoulders mm -hmm. go for single strap monokinis mm -hmm. and if you've got broader shoulders then go for uh, halter necks so that will definitely create your ratio properly for your uh -huh. body so it's that's it for interesting your... what you wear over your swimsuit. Uh, I, I mm -hmm. guess the beach wears are really huge as well. Yes. Yeah, before we get to that, let's talk about some Prince. patterns. Right. Patterns. Patterns are very important and it's really personal as well. Um, but the current pattern at the moment is tropical. Tropical, mm. fluoro colours, florals, anything that is bright and, vivi uh, uh, and vivid. That's all the rage at the moment. So for example, some we've examples. got... 
this one here, it's got some floral colours and it's really tropical looking. So, I mean, it just feels like you're on a paradise island or something. Aww. But if you're not really up for these kind of floral colours, um, if you like monotone colours, then the colour of the season is blue, which Young and Min Jung are wearing today. And blue is great because it suits everybody. It's refreshing. Um, what and she just showed us is something you wear over your swimsuit, yes? Okay, we yes, have some of the patterns that are in style right now. And mm. you can see that... Uh, There's a lot of thing going on, a yeah, lot of patterns. a lot of mixtures mm -hmm. right. of Tiger different stripes. patterns. Mm -hmm. So Geometric no stripes. plain and Jane this, this year, huh? And the blue colour as well, you can go for a monotone colour like your dress mm. or mm -hmm. pinstripes. And there's also those cute little polka dots which have come back again as well. Okay. Like nice and 80s. Okay, like what you're wearing right now. Mm-hmm. My polka dots? Yeah, like polka dots. Okay. So there are those ones. And when it comes to beachwear, I mean, everyone wears beachwear and it's flattering on anyone. Um, if you're not too comfortable just going all out and burying all of your skin, then um, beachwear is great because it actually gets that silhouette happening at the same okay, time. This is like the perfect yeah. example. I've seen right. a lot of women wear stuff like this when they're just lounging. If you want to cover up your body a little bit, if you're not mm. too confident, maybe yeah. you've gained a couple of pounds, mm -hmm. then you just Put that on and you're good to go. Also, Put they use a, nice a lot of mesh hat. material, right? Uh -huh. Because they go in the water, take a dip, come out, and then That's although right. they're still wet or, you know, you might not dry up completely, you can put this on and it'll dry up well. Yeah, nice and flowy and it gets the air going through as well. And you can easily take it off and on. There are also, like you're holding this one there, mm -hmm. you can just put it right on and if it's wet, it'll... It's not a problem, it'll just dry quickly. You can quickly. go to right, a dinner, uh, like a restaurant afterwards. You can, well. yeah, yes. that's why it's very flexible. Mm. And then there are maxi dresses, which are basically floor length dresses. Okay. Um, they bring your silhouette. Right. They make you look taller, especially when okay. you're wearing wedge And you wedge can mix heels. and match with yeah. a lot well, of different things. Well, so thank you so much for, much for bringing you're all welcome. these uh, swimwear for us. Well, that's all we have prepared for you on this thank you. Thursday morning. <laughs> for for you ladies, I don't think it's for us. I, don't, I haven't really seen anything <laughs> for me, but anyhow, thanks a lot for that. that. Card, no? We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Thank you for watching. Week.